I was diagnosed, I wasn't sure of my diagnosis. I was in and out of hospital um, on several occasions. They thought I had an ulcer, different things. Mm. And I was in for quite a, a long amount of time when they realised I had something to eat so I couldn't eat. Mm. I had a line fitted through my neck that came out here right. and it was TPN. I had to be fed through liquid. And um, I uh, had an operation to remove the ovary because they'd realised through a CT scan that I had ovarian cancer, but that's all I thought I had. Mm. So I went home, went back the next week for the operation. I went in and they removed the ovary. They prepared me for a stoma mm. and um, they'd done biopsies. So, and so they didn't at, know if I'd need a hysterectomy. Worst, they didn't know where it was at this point. At its worst, how, how bad was it? Oh, I had six weeks to live yeah. without yeah. treatment. And it had gone. It, it was all secondary, yeah. what this is. It was in my small bowel, which was inoperable, incurable. I had three big tumours in there. Mm. Yeah. The whole of my stomach was speckled in spots of oh, cancer. What were you told? Um, basically, it wasn't operable. It wasn't curable. Uh, chemo might buy me time. Hopefully, they'd be able to get me eating before I died. Mm. Oh, my gosh, so how horrible for I you. I left. I went back up to the ward. I uh, just wanted to get out of the hospital. I went to the pub mm. with my friend, my best friend, Annette, and we, I just sat outside the red line in my pyjamas. I had a pick line in my arm here mm. at this point, which eventually got sepsis yeah. with my first lot of chemo. Oh, gosh. And... Um, then I carried on when my friend had, my friends had researched the oil mm. from Rick Simpson. So this um, is this this is Rick Simpson. He he claimed that his skin cancer was yeah. cured by, by yeah. taking this cannabis oil. He was oil. the founder of it that mm. realised that it actually cures cancer, and it's the THC that eats the cancer. So and this is the this bit, is that's the bit they won't. Le I don't know why they won't legalise it here when because it is this is legal the bit in that other produces countries. Because this is the high. Yes. So that's and that's people are far worse drunk, aren't they? Really, if people are going out drinking, they're in more trouble than they are. Because this makes you really relaxed, chilled, sleep. However, the first time you tried it, oh, I was giggly. Yes, but not aggressive. It's never made me like if you can have a drink. People are aggressive. They fight, and but this has never made me feel aggressive, tired, how laughy, you... giggly. And if you drink with it, it's not good no. because oh. you hallucinate. How, how do you take it? Um, I take it in a little capsule. Mm -hmm. um, I bought these online. I squirt it in there, and mm. I just clear. I don't like the taste of it. And this is it. This is the this oil. Is this the oil. is the yeah. oil. So and that's about five mils. Which... That's not five mils. Oh, that's sorry. It, five mils is there. Oh, that okay. Like so that's three bar. mils. Yeah. And you normally buy it in. Am I right? In five, in mil... five mil syringe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that is. Just... Two hundred and fifty pounds to, yes, buy, to, to buy. buy that, yeah. and how long would that last you? Probably about between five and six months. I do take a bit more now because in August, when I got sepsis in this line, I had taken out. Yeah. I decided then I wasn't going to have because I was on chemo three days a week, every mm. two weeks, attached to my line, mm. and I just I'd had enough at that point, and I just went, I don't, I don't want this anymore, yeah. and I hit the oil every night, and I, I was playing with it because I didn't want to take it. I didn't like the feeling. I, I just. And I didn't know if it'd really work. I was a bit sceptical, so to the be results? honest. Well, my next scan then, when I, I'd only had like one lot of chemo, yeah. and then I had a scan, and the results were absolutely astounding. It's all gone um, in my pelvis, ovary, stomach, small bowel. The tumours have gone. God. There's a little bit left in my gastric stomach. There are a number of occasions we've interviewed people on the sofa here. How come at this stage we know so little about its curative effects? Essentially because the government hasn't allowed people to take it and use it for these purposes. As far as cancer is concerned, there's around 20 to 25 years of evidence from tissue studies, animal studies, and anecdotal reports like Joy's here of quite remarkable, uh, quite very profound uh, effects and, you know, up to, up to the level of cures in some cases. But, but, but um, there is... But there's no, been no controlled clinical trials, no double-blind clinical trials. But I don't understand why, because I'm assuming that treating why. with cannabidiol will be cheaper than the vast amounts of money that are used for chemotherapy. But is that, oh, yes. Why? Is that it part is of the why? reason? It's well, if you're 
Can, if you've got to mind for conspiracy theories, then you know people accuse Big Pharma of being quite opposed to cannabis legalisation because it would potentially eat into their profits. But in, in terms of, of cancer, what the animals and the tissue studies have shown is that it causes the cancer cells to commit suicide. It's a process that's known scientifically as apoptosis, um, which basically it's called programmed cell death. And it also prevents or reduces the level of uh, the blood supply to tumour tissues, so it tends to sort of shrivel them at one uh, at one level and then sort of mm. knock them out completely at the other. How important How, Can is... I just say, though, it doesn't work for all cancers. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't work for all individuals. So one cancer in different individuals might have different effects and different people have got different susceptibilities to, to cannabis. How, how, mu how important is this THC? Uh, because uh, we've got a Home Office spokesman said uh, that um, a, a CBD product which contains any trace of the psychoactive compounds that are found in cannabis such as THC, therefore unlawful to possess and to supply. I mean, you're breaking the law. Mm. Um, uh, how essential in the product is the THC? It, there are different, uh, obviously, different for different medical conditions, the cannabinoid balance is, is changed. So for epilepsy, for instance, CBD is the compound that you're really after because it's anticonvulsant and it's you can actually also, also yeah that is actually legal and in that's this country. legal yeah thc is the one that has the effects on things like um multiple sclerosis on the on the sort of cancer on um various other various other uh, conditions and uh, pain relief particularly and um that's the one that's illegal because it gets people high and the government regards people getting high as a very serious side effect whereas the individuals that take it some people regard it as an adverse effect somebody some people regard it as a beneficial so, effect. Joy I mean we as we've just discussed here you are breaking the law do you worry about getting into trouble with the police? Not at all it's my life when you backs against the wall and you get told you've got six weeks to live you'll try anything yeah. and I've never touched a drug in my life but you know. And will you continue to use it? I will yeah.